Right. Thank you, thank you, Candice. Uh, thank you, Shua. Uh, <clears throat> thanks to the Linux Foundation for, for hosting me here. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, so um, let's get started. Um, uh, as as Candice said, my name is Watson. I'm software engineer at Google, and I'm here today to tell you all a little bit about uh, how one can go about writing Linux kernel modules in Rust. Um, I am one of the maintainers of the project. Uh, there are other people working uh, on this too, of course. Um, Miguel, for example, is, is, is another maintainer and he's actually giving two, uh, he, he, he mentored two sessions uh, and, and uh, those are more introductory um, uh, Rust sessions. And uh, if you have the time, I, I, I recommend that you go and watch those two uh, uh, later on. Uh, so so here's, here's, here's the agenda for, uh, for today. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll first show you some commands that I'd like you to run on the, on the VM um, to get the latest version of, of the code because uh, there were some improvements recently. Um, then I'll, I'll give you a little bit of uh, background information about uh, the project, why, why we're doing this, and a little bit about uh, kernel development and how, um, how the workflows uh, uh, function. Um, and, and just, just as, as a background, maybe uh, some of you are already familiar with all these things, so I'll try to go quickly there. Um, and then we're going to get to, to actually writing the module. At that point, I'll, I'll switch to the, to the, uh, to the console where, the, where, I'm, where I'm connected to the, to the VM that we shared uh, ahead of time. Um, so uh, for those of you who actually downloaded the VM, I can, I can connect to it. Uh, if you want to try to follow along and try to, to, to replicate uh, what I'm doing, uh, I'd be happy to, to try to answer questions if, if you run into, into any issues uh, there. And in fact, any questions in general, I'd be happy to, 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 to try to answer too. Um, uh, and then some, some, some conclusions and uh, things to, to, to look forward to. Um, so uh, getting started, um, the, the, the first thing I'd, I'd like uh, you folks to do, uh, the ones that are actually going to, to, to try to follow along and, and, and reproduce it, is to boot the VM and, and log in as a guest. That's, that's the first thing. Um, and then I'd like you to run this command. So the first one is really optional. It's just that, uh, um, let me highlight here the screen, um, setting, setting Vim as, as the editor for, for when, when we commit things. Um, and then the, the, the other commands are, are for, for fetching the latest version. Uh, I do the depth one here to, to reduce the amount of, of, of things to download. Um, I'm actually going to, to run these commands here uh, on my VM too. So what, what I did was I actually uh, bootstrapped the very same VM that, that uh, you all have. So there's, there's uh, no, no difference. Um, so one, one thing that, um, um, uh, so I'm not going to switch to the, to the console right now because uh, it would take away from the, from, the, from the presentation and I want you to be able to see the commands. Uh, so, so I'll type I'll type the comments here just uh, quickly. Um, it's going to be better once once I switch. Uh, maybe, perhaps I should switch. Let me do that. Let me switch the screen here so you can. Yeah, there you go. I hope you can see my my console now. Um, let me run some, let me run those, those comments there now. Um, yeah, so, so I just logged in, I, I, I did the, the configuration and I go into Linux, this is where the source code is. Um, and I'm gonna fetch the latest version, uh, that one version. <clears throat> so it's fetching. Um, Okay, now that we have it, I'll do a checkout of that. Um, and uh, let's wait a bit. This, this can, can take a bit of time since it's in the VM and there's uh, lots of files. Um, and then what, what uh, after a checkout, what we're going to do is we're going to, so the, the, the next commands are the commands to download the latest version of the Rust compiler. Uh, between when I created this VM and now, there was a new release of the, of the compiler. Which removed some some um, some unstable features that we were using, so uh, it's 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 good to 
switch to, to the new version. Then we do a make config to, to, to configure the, the, the kernel uh, to the options that we want, uh, and then we compile. And then once we leave it compiling, then we can switch back to the presentation and I'll uh, walk, walk uh, through the, uh, the background information. Actually, while this is taking a while, I'm going to switch back to the, to the presentation. Um, and Okay. So I'll be back at the presentation. Uh, while my checkout is, is, is going on, let's just go back to the background. Once the checkout completes, I'll, I'll um, continue the comments there. So uh, the first thing I'd, I'd like to, to tell you all about is uh, this project that we call Rust for Linux. Um, the source code is available at this link. Um, uh, anyone can, can go and, and, and check out the source code and contribute to it if, if they so choose. Uh, and the goal of the project is really to make Rust a uh, first class language for Linux kernel development. Okay. And uh, one thing that we keep being asked is, is why do we want to do that, right? And, and there are basically two, two reasons. And, and the third one listed there is, is, is sort of like a, a um, precondition for this to be, to be, to be possibly accepted. Uh, so the, the first thing is memory safety, okay? So Rust is a, a memory safe uh, language and there are um, uh, researchers have actually worked on, on, on formally uh, verifying this, this properties of the language. Um, and what this gives us is, is that we have a reduced number of memory vulnerabilities uh, in new code. So the idea is that um, when we, uh, um, once Rust is made an official language in the Linux kernel, new code could be written in Rust and this new code uh, would have fewer vulnerabilities than uh, if it had been written uh, in C. Not because uh, uh, programmers are better or, or worse, uh, it's just that the, the language will catch things for you. Uh, sooner. And uh, this also relates to uh, productivity. Uh, the reach type system that um, Rust offers us uh, gives us the ability to actually catch a bunch of, 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 of potential issues uh, at compile time. Um, and uh, so I'll give you a, a brief example of this productivity uh, improvement is, is, is very, very simple. Okay. So let's say we're, we're calling a function and it's in C. We're calling the function in C that takes as an argument, a string, okay? It's a pointer to a, to a character, uh, 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 char star type, okay? Um, so let's say it's a registration with the subsystem and we'll talk a little bit more about what, what that means. But in, in, in C, and in fact, this applies to any sort of points, uh, when you call a function, we know that for the duration of that call, uh, whatever passes pass as arguments must remain um, uh, valid uh, from the point of view of the caller, okay? but the question then arises is when the function returns, right? What is uh, what happens to that pointer? Okay, we have several options, right? In this case of of, of uh, string with a name, it could be the case that um, the callee, the subsystem uh, with which uh, we were registering, made a copy of it, which means that once the function returns, uh, we are free to to reuse uh, the memory. For example, if if it's a stack allocated memory that we do did the ascend printf onto, uh, it's it's fine for it to be free. Right, so that's one option. Uh, the callee makes a copy of it. Uh, the other option is that the, the callee holds onto the pointer, right, but doesn't take ownership. Okay, which means that uh, the caller is responsible for ensuring that uh, that piece of memory remains valid um, and and for, for however long the, the registration lasts. Right, that's that's uh, one option. And there's a third option, which is that the the callee takes ownership of of, of the pointer, which means that the caller is not supposed to use the pointer anymore, and the callee will eventually free it when, when the time is right. Now, in C, when you're calling a function, there is no indication from the type system of which sort of behavior uh, one should expect from, from any given function. And all, all these three options that I've uh, uh, told you about actually exist in the kernel. You can find functions in the kernel that behave in, in any of these three options. So it's not like there's a preferred way and everybody does that by convention, at least not in the kernel, uh, that there are all sorts of uh, different uh, implementations. Uh, now in Rust, 
um, you actually get uh, uh, this information from 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 the, the type system, right? Uh, in fact, it 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 enforces the rules for you. So, for example, if you say that it's the case where the colleague holds on to the pointer, uh, and and then uh, uh, um, what it means is that if you actually try to free the memory uh, before it's time, the compiler will say, oh. Um, this pointer that you passed in needs to outlive this registration that, that you've made. Okay, so the compiler catches that at compile time. Um, if there's a copy, then it's it's, it's the easiest thing, right? And then then uh, that there are no nothing to, to be enforced. Um, but if you pass ownership, for example, to into the copy, then uh, the compiler also enforces that uh, once the, the the function returns, that you're not uh, allowed to use that piece of memory. And we'll actually see an example of that in, in our in our code. So uh, this is uh, an example of productivity. And it's not only at the time that you are writing the code. Because the thing is, if you introduce a bug this way, then it will manifest itself later on right, in, in unexpected ways because you may be corrupting memory. right? So you also have to spend time uh, debugging and trying to figure out what, uh, where this, this uh, uh, bug came from or, or, or what, what caused uh, this, this uh, original memory to be, to be overwritten. Um, so, so this is the, the, the sort of productivity gain that, that uh, we see with Rust, not just at, at the time that you write the code, but also later on, uh, once you start the testing and debugging uh, your code. And then the, 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 the third uh, thing that, that we have is that the performance is comparable to C, right? All these things that we say that we, we, we enforce is, 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 these things are enforced at compile time, right? So the compilation is, takes longer, does take longer, uh, but um, the generated code is, is doesn't have it. And this is an important thing because other languages that, that claim uh, memory safety and type safety, um, most of them, at least the ones widely used, uh, do this uh, with a garbage collector, right? Which means that we have a, this extra cost at runtime uh, and, and potentially uh, freezing threads and CPUs so it can do the, the garbage collection. Uh, this is not the case uh, for Rust, okay? The enforcement is done at um, about time. Um, um, uh, Miguel's uh, uh, sessions uh, actually cover some, some of these things. Uh, so that's it for uh, why, for RESTful Linux and why we're doing this. So now let's talk a little bit about the differences between uh, user and kernel space. Um, I think most of you and most of us are, are accustomed to, to user space processes. Um, and, and, and the idea here is that each one of them has a Oh, yeah. Ritson, um, there are a couple of questions if you want to field them sure. in the Q and A. I can read them out for you. Yeah, if you could. I, I, yeah, I see lots of things. I don't know. No, it's all right. Kindly, do you have articles or books about writing Linux kernel in Rust language? Would that be the link to the uh, GitHub, your GitHub, or do you have other languages? Yeah, no, yeah. The, the best we have at the moment is is, is GitHub, and if you look at uh, samples Rust. There's lots of things there uh, of, of examples. Um, there are no books or, or, or articles. Uh, this is something that uh, will will be released uh, in time. So it's, not, so it's not ready yet, but, but will be. Okay. There is an, I, I answered the question with the GitHub link um, that I, I already have. Can we debug our Rust code using Intel debugging by using JTAG or the USB 3? Um, yeah, so, so the, the, the once, once the binary is compiled, there's no, there's real, really no, no difference between uh, uh, Rust code and, and C code, right? If you attach uh, to some device with JTAG, you can see the assembly instructions and you can just use it, right? Uh, the symbols uh, they are emitted uh, uh, also the same format as, as C. Um, so yeah, you should be able to, to, to debug with, with any debugger. What I usually do is, 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 is GDB, uh, and there will be a mention of this uh, later on. The rest of the questions in the chat are more about VM and not connecting to. Looks like uh, people are helping each other. Um, so, Watson, you can continue. Yes, yeah, so, we don't have any questions. Yeah, there. so I see some questions about Google OS config agent failing. Yeah, I, th I think those are fine. I mean, you can you can ignore those. Uh, so, what, what happened with this VM is mm -hmm. that I created it uh, in, in in a um, Google Cloud machine, and then I I. I uh, Copied the image out of that, so so maybe it's trying to talk to some uh, Google services, um, but it should yeah it's, it should be fine to to ignore those. Um, okay, so let's let's go back to um, to, to the presentation. Um, 
so yeah, so so what I was saying here was that um, we have these uh, processes and, and they all have their own uh, address space, meaning that uh, in the case here, if process one goes to uh, some memory position, I don't know, a thousand and write something there, and then process two goes to that same uh, uh, memory address, a thousand, right? Then they, they won't see uh, what process one did because they are virtual uh, addresses uh, and they point to different physical, physical machines. Uh, except, of course, if they arrange for this to be mapped. So, but by default, nothing is, 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 is shared. But if they share it, then, then they, they could achieve that, that goal. But by default, that's not what happens. Um, and then uh, processes uh, make syscalls into, into the kernel. Okay, and the kernel, and this is what I'm trying to, to indicate with this box, is that the kernel has its own uh, address space. Uh, and then inside, you have uh, components, subsystems, uh, some, 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 some file systems, some, some networking, uh, scheduler. <laughs> Sorry. And um, uh, these are all in the same address space. Another thing that the kernel can do is if it's called in the process, in the, in the context of process, then, then it, it can access that process's address space while in that context, right? And at the same time, the, the, the kernel address space. And this is going to play a role when, when we get to writing our, our module later on. We'll be able to see it. Uh, and then underneath that, you have the hardware or hypervisor, depending on, on, on the, whether you're in a physical machine or virtualized machine. Uh, and, and, and the kernel doesn't allow uh, user space uh, processes to go straight to, to the hardware, right? It has to go through, through the kernel. Uh, there are, of course, exceptions uh, and, and ways in which the kernel can arrange for processes to go straight to uh, uh, the hardware, but, but those are exceptions. Um, so, so this is, this is the, 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 the separation uh, user space and kernel. I think this is uh, uh, somewhat familiar to most people. Um, now we'll talk briefly about the lifetime of uh, a kernel module. Because this is slightly different from, from a regular program in, in user space. Like if you think about a console uh, um, program um, like, like CAT or, or LS, uh, what they do is there's, there's a main function that gets called, and then they perform something, and then eventually they, they return. And that's, that's the end of the process. The modules are slightly different. So um, during, during boot, if this is a built-in module, or when the module is loaded, if it's, if it's a loadable module, um, there's an init being, being called. Uh, which is similar to the main in the, in, the, in, in, in the user space program. Um, but, but instead of just doing whatever it, it wants to do, what it really does is it goes to some subsystem and registers with that subsystem. Okay. And then, and then the, the subsystem uh, acknowledges the registration, fails it, and then it uh, completes, which is returned. So this is different from user space, where main runs after the duration of, of, of the program. Right. Uh, and this is the initialization of the module, just registers with the subsystem. Uh, and then some actor could be a hardware, could be a user uh, from uh, from uh, user space uh, doing some action, uh, but it triggers some action on the subsystem, and the sub subsystem uh, figures out uh, who needs to handle this. And if it's if it's this this module, uh, there'll be a callback uh, that it gets issued to the module. The module does whatever work it needs to do, and eventually uh, returns the subsystem that returns to to the actor. Um, so basically, the idea here is that at steady state after registration. Uh, and, and this part actually can happen several times. Okay, so there's uh, some action happens, uh, subsystem figures out uh, that our module needs to handle this and call that, right? So the, the, the modules work this way. There's the register and then they, they get these calls uh, occasionally. Um, and then if it's a loadable module and can be loaded, um, uh, then there's an exit call uh, into, into the module. The module unregisters from, from the subsystem. Uh, comes back and, and, and that's the end of it. So we have um, an init where, where it registers. Uh, we have a set of callbacks while the, 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 the module is loaded and running. Uh, and then eventually uh, we, have, we have an unload that results in unregistration. <coughs> so here's, here's what, what we're going to build. Okay, so uh, it's a kernel module, so it's going to be within the kernel. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create these uh, virtual devices called Skull, Skull 0, 1, 2, the, the, uh, 3 up to N. And, and the name actually comes from uh, the, the driver in the Linux device driver's uh, book. Um, so the idea is, uh, so the module loads, the module registers uh, all these devices um, and registers some callbacks. Uh, and then some, when some process comes around and does, for example, a cat into Skull 0, uh, there's open issue for, for Skull 0, uh, there's a write. And this right here, you see that there's, uh, I added some data here. It, so a right carries some data, okay? So when that right comes in, uh, the data is actually in the process one address space, uh, but the kernel makes a copy of it into the kernel address space, 
and stores it uh, in, in, in index code zero in this case. And then there's a close comes comes to this process. Then the process goes away. Okay. Now note that uh, data uh, stayed behind, even though process was destroyed and there's no vector space, there's no buffer, there's no more data in process one. There is no process one. The data that it wrote is still here, it's code zero. Okay. And then there's a process two that comes along and does a cast. Now it wants to read uh, from, from it's called zero. And then there's uh, an open, uh, there's a read, and this read, when it completes, it actually returns the data that process one had written before, even though it's, it's, it's gone now. And eventually it closes. So this is what, what we're going to, be, to build, okay? A module that uh, creates these, these virtual devices and uh, processes can write to these devices uh, and whatever they write is, are going to stay there, right? Um, and then uh, uh, other processes can, can read. But actually one thing that I should say is that only the last uh, write stays there. Um, and, and this is different from, from a regular uh, uh, file system because we're not persisting this, okay? So if we reboot the machine, then <coughs> all the data that we had stored here um, goes away because uh, uh, it's, it's just in memory, it's not uh, persistent anyway. Um, the development uh, workflow, uh, briefly, uh, we built a busy box uh, image. Uh, you can think of it as, as a tiny distribution. Um, and then the, this is the icon for new game. So we'll add it to the code, uh, we'll make some changes to the code, and we compile the code and we get um, a Linux image out of that. Uh, and then we use QMU to actually, so we, we, we feed into QMU the, the Linux kernel image and the busy box image that, that we had built. Uh, and this allows the, the, the code to run. And then if we have bugs and we need to, to debug something, uh, then we can use GDB. This is the, the logo for GDB actually. Uh, we can attach to, to QMU, but we, we don't really attach to QMU itself, not to talk to the uh, emulator. The emulator actually has a, a GDB stub that allows us to attach to, 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 the, to the VM, right? so we can pause the machine and we can set breakpoints and watch points and step through and call and get uh, call stacks and things like those. Uh, and this is the, the workflow, okay? And then, and then we come back to modifying the code and then uh, recompiling and then running QMU. So this is the, the, the flow. Uh, it's slightly different from user space because user space, once, once you, you uh, change the thing and you compile, you can just run it natively, right? Uh, here, we can't really run it directly. So we, we need to, to have a tool like you and you or put it on a physical device uh, to run. And this is, this is, this is what, what we're going to do. Um, actually, uh, the, the, the checkout that I had done has actually completed uh, some time back. So I, I, I would like to, to, to start building the kernel because soon, soon we're going to need it. So let me um, switch back to the, to the VM and we're gonna issue the, we're back to the VM and um, let me find the comments again here at the front. Um, <clears throat> So, so one thing that I, well, on source of, uh, we can go to this uh, documentation and we can we can copy the comments from there. This is the, this is the thing for us to, to, to set the, the, the compiler. <clears throat> We're going to, now here it's downloading the, the latest version of, of, of Rust. Um, it shouldn't, shouldn't take long. But then we have a couple of questions, uh, if you would like to field. Well, well, we'll wait for this, yeah. Okay. Uh, one, the first one is, I'm a senior year student. I like to build something related to Linux kernel. Is there something you can suggest that's beginner friendly? Beginner friendly. So <clears throat> one, one thing that I'd suggest uh, to, to, to that person is, is to join. We actually have a... a a Zulip uh, chat server where people can 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 join and, and, and speak to us, uh, not just be the other maintainers in the project and other people involved, uh, and uh, we can discuss more of their options. They can also go to the to the to the um, uh, to the link where 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 there's the, the Rust for Linux project, and we have uh, issues bugs there, and some of them are tagged as good first issues. So this is actually a good uh, source of of, of um, 
work for, for beginners. Um, and then, of course, they can uh, do more complicated stuff after that. Um, so the um, Watson, the question, the type comments you are typing there, are they part of the cheat sheet in the uh, uh, Google Drive? They, no. So they, these comments here are actually at the start of, of, of this slide deck. Okay. Uh, so the slide the deck slide. That, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that Ken is shared in the beginning. Uh, if you if you go there, you you will find it there. Um, yeah. So the other question, second question we have is productivity lost following Rust, Rust rules make code bigger than respective C code, which I agree is needed to achieve memory safety, but I won't, won't this bring productivity down at least initially? Uh, no, I actually, <clears throat> so um, w w I, I don't have any C code uh, uh, in, in, in the slides, but, but one thing that I can tell you uh, in terms of uh, code size, it actually brings code, uh, uh, um, it condenses actually, the code is much smaller. And, and one, one thing that makes it smaller is the error handling. And, and, and we'll, we'll see that uh, very vividly. There, there are two, two aspects, two aspects of, 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 of error handling that are important in Rust and make things much smaller, okay? One, one thing is that in C, what you have to do is you have to, uh, assign the, the, the return value of a function to some, some, some variable. And then you see if it's less than zero, and then if it's less than zero, then you do something, okay? And that something, maybe some cleanup and then return, or it may be a go to some, some uh, uh, label that does some cleanup and then, and then exits. Okay, so this is the, the first aspect, okay? There's, there's this assignment and then this if condition. In Rust, we actually have this, this uh, syntax trigger, which is a question mark, okay? That um, uh, <clears throat> tells us, uh, 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 that basically does that check for us, right? It says, uh, if there's a question mark at the end of an expression, uh, it's expected, expected to be uh, an, a, an error code, not an error code, but something that may return an error. And if it's an error, it returns right away. Okay, so we already have the, the elimination of these uh, uh, ifs, uh, if statements, uh, at least from, from, from the code itself. And the other aspect of this is that the drop uh, traits in, in Rust allows us to clean up uh, automatically. So when we see a question mark and we return, uh, return right away, uh, everything that we had done that needs to be undone is automatically undone, right? So all these uh, uh, error paths that we see a lot of in the kernel where we actually have like a label and then clean, clean something up, another label cleans another thing up, another label cleans another thing up, and then a return of, of some error code. This means that there, are, there were three things that, that uh, were, were initialized um, and on an error path need to be uh, uninitialized in reverse order, right? So we actually have as developers to, to, to do this in reverse order and we have to be careful about that and we have to make sure that we never forget to, to undo any, anything like that. So uh, Rust actually does away with all this, right? You don't have to do any of this um, um, uh, stacking in and unstacking of, of state uh, that does it automatically. So the code is actually quite smaller as you'll see. And, and, and in, of course there are things that people need to get used to uh, uh, and and uh, I think that's that's easy enough to to to, uh, to get to. So in my experience, the code is actually small. One one thing that does happen is uh, when we create the abstractions, then then those are a bit more complicated, right? But the idea is that uh, you'll build the abstractions once, uh, and then uh, people just use the abstractions, right? Uh, the, the, the the implementation of these abstractions is not something that uh, is going to happen uh, a lot of time. Okay, somebody uh, copied the, the comments here and, and pasted. Thank you, thank you for that, uh, Christopher Um Well, were yeah. there other questions? Yes, there are a couple of more questions. And I don't know if this is uh, uh, relevant to, to this presentation, but I will read that out anyway. Kindly, can you give us more code about writing kernels, including the MPI message packs passing in parallel processing? Give more code. I mean, we're going to show. I'm going to show you some 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 code. We're going to write uh, some code here, um, and um, I, I, I'm not sure there will be anything specific uh, to to what the the, the person asked. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, jo join Zulu or, or send us an email to 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 uh, the mailing list, uh, and, and we'll try to to find you something. Uh, I'm sorry if I don't have anything now. That thank you. And there is another one. Can I build Rust for Linux using a Rust compiler as shipped by a modern distro. Depending on the latest and greatest compiler from Rust up seems odd. Yeah, so so uh, 
we actually so the problem the problem at the moment is that we actually rely on a bunch of, of features uh, that are still uh, unstable and by unstable uh, what, what, it, what it means by unstable is that it's subject to change in the future okay so we actually have to track a, 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 a version and the idea is once we get rid of all these uh, unstable features by either stabilizing them with, with, with the rest folks um, or, or just uh, 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 finding different ways of doing things, right? Then, then, then we can stay uh, pinned to that one uh, version. And then, and then when, when we reach that point, uh, then, then we can just use whatever uh, that version is. And, and those will also be, be available in distributions. Uh, so at the moment we can't, we can't pin, uh, but, but in the future we will be able to. So let me, was there anything else, uh, Shwa, that? Uh, this one, oh, looks like there is one more. Um, how do I join Zoom server for beginners? Oh, yes, I posted these two li uh, um, session links um, for Miguel's sessions in the chat, or you can also check that on our event uh, webinar site. So go ahead and do that. Uh, the other thing, Somebody is asking uh, the link for the Zulip chat. Um, that's, I think we can supply that later. Uh, let me see yes. what other question we have here. Looking at drivers. Uh, okay, looking at drivers char, hardware random BCM driver, wondering if there is a new coding style for us. Okay. So the, I think the question is, I, I'm guessing the question is that just like the C coding style guide we have, is the Linux, uh, I mean the Rust coding style guide for Karna? Uh, no, so for, for, for the, for Rust code itself, we just follow the, the Rust format uh, style. The style itself is, 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 is the same. Uh, there's still nothing specific to, to, to the kernel. Uh, we do have some conventions that, that, we, um, that we follow. For example, if we have uh, unsafe functions, then we require that uh, the documentation block in the function contains a section that describes what the safety requirements are in, in, in the sense that, uh, what are the, the, the preconditions that callers must satisfy, satisfy uh, to safely use that function. And then when people actually call these functions, then we require an annotation there that uh, matches the requirements and explains why uh, the caller is satisfying those requirements, right? So we have conventions like this, and those are described in the documentation, uh, Rust uh, uh, those documents there. Uh, and Miguel actually covered those too in, in previous sessions. Um, and and um, and I think that's that, that's it. Uh, of course, we have like uh, so, sort of like design uh, guidelines where where we say uh, <clears throat> we don't want people to go straight to to C code to to C functions because um, those are unsafe, right? So what we'd like to see is that uh, abstractions, zero cost abstractions are built uh, around the, 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 the C functionality that actually provide a safe way for people to, to call into that functionality. And we've done that for, for a few subsystems. Uh, and, and in fact, what we want to do over time is to um, uh, work with, with, with the maintainers of, of each subsystem uh, for them to build uh, their abstractions in Rust as well for the subsystem so people can write code in, in, in Rust for those subsystems. Okay, I think I'm going to switch to the presentation. Um, yes, there are no other questions, Miguel, go ahead. Let me switch back to the, to the presentation. There's just a few more slides and then we'll go into the code that's already running short in time, I think. Um, Okay. All right. So <clears throat> this is where we were um, uh, here briefly. So, so the, 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 the kernel actually has lots and lots of configurations, has at least hundreds, maybe thousands of, 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 of config options. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to be able to boot uh, quickly and we want to be able to build quickly. Um, so, so what we've done was we, we uh, wrote this uh, minimal configuration needed to, to build uh, and run QMU and BZBox image. Um, so when we do a, 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 a when we build the configuration to build the kernel, we use this all low config saying that we say no to everything. And then this actually enables everything that we need to, to boot with QMU and DZBox, and this enables Rust, right? 
Uh, and part of what we're going to do today is adding uh, another module, the scale module, uh, to, to this, and we'll have to enable this, and uh, we'll, we'll see it uh, in a second. Uh, and then the, the last slide before we go into the code, uh, just some information about the setup. I have Tmux installed, I have NeoBeam, uh, and these are optional. So really what I wanted to say is these are optional. Uh, um, the reason I use this is, is because I want to have different windows and you'll see how, because this actually uh, is my setup. This is how I, I, I move on a, on a daily basis. Uh, somebody unmuted who wanted to ask some question? Okay. Um, so, so uh, um, Neo, NeoBeam, the reason I use NeoBeam instead of Beam or, or something else is, is that it actually has LSP support, which allows us to use Verse Analyzer, which actually allows us to uh, get uh, completion and documentation of functions as, as we write uh, code and, and we have to see uh, some of that. Uh, so let's get into, into uh, writing the, the, the kernel module now. Uh, so we're going to do this in, in, in 16 steps. Okay, I, I'm not sure we'll have time, and it's okay if you don't have time to, to, to do it all, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to go through uh, these this steps with you here. And um, I actually shared uh, a, a link in the end of, of this slide deck to these steps uh, 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 already implemented, and, and you, can, you can see that uh, offline uh, later on. So let's do one last switch back to the console, and then we We'll get started. Okay, so here here we have we have um, here we have the console. Um, let me I'll run I'll run Timo Tmux. Um, and so here what it does it actually um, it, it gives us the ability to have several windows. So, so if I have I have a windows here, uh, I have another window here, I have a window here. So I have a uh, few windows, and you, you, you can see the, the, the star here uh, down at the bottom tells us uh, where, where we are. Okay. Uh, so I'll keep switching between between these uh, windows. So so that's um, the, the the first thing uh, we'll do is as I said, we have several uh, uh, config options in the kernel. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new one for, for the sample that, that uh, we're going to write, okay? So uh, the place we're going to, do, to go is the samples Rust, which is the, the directory that I, I mentioned before. Uh, so let's go to kconfig, which is the, the, the file that uh, has uh, the configurations in them. I'll just copy uh, one of these and I'll paste it down here. And um, we're gonna rename it to sample uh, Rust skull. And this is a string that uh, describes, describes it. Let's say it's a skull module. Um, first, skull module sample and stop. Okay. So I just copied, pasted, and, and I'm, I'm, I changed some, some strings in it um, and saved it. Um, now we open a make file. <clears throat> So that first kconfig thing that we did was just to add an option, and which appears in the in in, in the in the menu. If, if we go there, we'll go there in a second. Um, now we change the make file. We're saying if if this uh, Rust skull option is 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 enabled, then please include uh, Rust skull dot in the build. Okay, and if if we do a bit, this is this is uh, what, what we have. Uh, and if we try to if we try to 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 make the kernel uh, from this, um, what's it's just going to fail because we, we don't have a Rust skull. Now, one thing that I should say is that up up to up up actually it didn't fail because it's not configured. Uh, so let's let's uh, configure it. Um, in menu config. Um, this actually brings up a menu that has the list of. Uh, has a hierarchy of, of, of options uh, for the kernel. If you uh, press slash, uh, you get this um, search. And if, if you type skull in it, uh, it finds, you see the uh, Rust uh, samples, uh, sample Rust skull and, and uh, the, the information that we actually typed. And there's a one here. So if you press one, it, it'll try to take you there. Uh, but it can't go there because sample kernel code is not enabled, so we enable it. And we go into it, uh, Rust samples, we enable it and we go into it. Um, we scroll down, and then here we have the skull module that we've just added. So we select it, and then we exit, exit, exit. 
And okay, so now we've enabled it. And if we try to, to, to build it, now it's going to fail because it can't, it can't find the first skull uh, dodo. Uh, and in fact, the steps that we've taken so far, uh, um, nothing is different from C. C would be exactly the same. Um, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty file. File and now this is the one difference from C is that in C you, you would have used a, a .c file here instead of a .rs file. Uh, but now we compile. See, there's there's a warning complaining that uh, we're missing documentation. But otherwise, the the, the kernel compiled. <laughs> so this this actually was was uh, the first step that we had in in, in writing the um, the sample the sample module in Rust. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit uh, this as step one. Okay, it's complaining that I haven't set up my email and name, so I'll, I'll do that. My own name. Okay, so there you go. Now, now we have we have our, our first step. Okay, and it's it's of course empty, so it doesn't do anything. Uh, <clears throat> we can we can boot this, but uh, it's, it's not interesting. So let's let's actually start and and, and write the, the 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 actual Rust code. Uh, before we do that, uh, one thing that I'd like to show is that we have this uh, make Rust uh, analyzer option that uh, when, it, when it runs, it creates this, uh, this uh, JSON file here, rust-product.json, which is used by uh, Rust Analyzer to, to, to find things, right? So it, it has the source code and all the configs for, for everything. Um, so I'll go to this other window here and then I'm gonna start uh, NeoDean. Um, and I'm gonna open that file, um, what is it, skull.rs. Which, which, which is empty, okay? The first thing we're going to do is, is similar to, to a, a pound include in, in oh, it's complaining about something here. Okay. Uh, there's some, some error, something misconfigured. Um, but but uh, um, this is similar to, to uh, a pound include in, in, in C, but if, if you see now, there's actually already an, an improvement, uh, I, I feel, because when I did the, the colon colon, it's already giving me some options here of, of, of things that I can try. Um, what, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the prelude and star, right? The prelude is basically a set of things that uh, most, uh, most writers use. Uh, and then again, as I, as I start typing module, which is uh, how I'm going to become a module, I see like, um, if, if you look here on the side, there's even an example of how to, to, to do a module. So, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy from that. Um, see if I, if I manage to copy from it. Uh, it's fine, I can copy from it. I'll, I'll just type it. So what I do is I have to specify a type, uh, a name. So if, if I if I try to to if if I try to compile this, it's going to complain. I'm going to try it here for you to see it. Um, if I try to compile, complain, it's it's going to complain that that skull uh, as a type is 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 not not found in that skull. In that, uh, so so I actually need to implement a type called skull. So I'll just do a, stop, a struct called skull and and it's empty. Okay, so when we <coughs> um, try try to uh, uh, Try to compile it. Oh, I didn't say. When we try to to compile it again, uh, it, it's going to complain about a different thing. It's going to say that it doesn't implement the the trait module. Okay. So let's let's do that. Um, and, and in fact, about uh, traits and introductions to introduction to to to, to Rust, I again refer to to Miguel's uh, sessions. Um, but but basically, the idea in 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 Rust, and this is a pattern that we'll see uh, throughout uh, uh, these sessions of writing code in Rust. Is that usually what we do is we declare some type and then we implement some trait, right? And this is similar to what we see in C 
uh, but it's slightly different. What we see, we see is we have these uh, operation tables, which are structs with pointers in them for functions, right? So you have, for example, file operations uh, is, is, is an example of them. Um, so this is, there's a similar uh, 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 theme here in, in Rust, except that the, the, the ergonomics are, are slightly different and, and, and more condensed and, and easier to, to implement, I feel. Uh, so, so let's do this. Um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna say that uh, we're gonna implement the kernel module uh, trait for skull, okay? And then one thing that we can do after we do that, we can do this GA, and then uh, we see the options down here. Can say implement uh, missing members, uh, and the thing uh, appears automatically for us. That is indeed. I'm gonna remove this uh, thing here because it's not needed. Um, and if I try to compile this, um, I should compile unless yes. That's, there are warnings <coughs> about the names that uh, were not used and still the missing documentation. Uh, for, the, for the names not used, um, I've conversion in Rust and it's not specific to the kernel set view. If you prefix them with, with an underline, you're saying that yes, I uh, know they're not being used. And the other warning is about uh, missing documentation. So we will add a documentation here for this module where we say it's a skull module in Rust. Something like that. Okay, so if we try to, to build this, um, now it compiles, there are no warnings. And um, in fact, we can um, try to, to, to run this kernel. And uh, if you run, you see, oh, there's, what's going on here? Oh, it panicked with uh, not yet implemented uh, on line 15. Because the thing is, when we ask it to implement, it doesn't know what uh, an implementation needs, uh, has to be. Uh, so it adds this to do, which is a macro in Rust that uh, resolves to, to whatever your result needs to be, uh, but panics at, at runtime. So what we need to do here is we need to say OK and, and return a skull um, um, value. And since skull is an empty struct, it, 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 it just skull is going to return an empty value. So let's uh, cancel this. Uh, let's make again and let's try to run this. Now, <clears throat> this time I expect it to, 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 to run, and um, but, but we won't really be able to see anything different. It was good that that to do was there initially because we saw that the, at least the code ran, uh, ran, and, and we saw that it, it panicked because there was an implementation missing. Um, and now, like the kernel booted, and, and, and nothing happened there. So I'm going to power off and uh, come out of that. So this this was uh, our that one. So let's uh, let's commit this uh, so so we can. Uh, and commit. Okay. Well, uh, the next step is, is, is actually a, a quite simple one. And we just like to print a hello world when, when the kernel is booting, right? And the way to do that here is this PR info macro. And let's say hello world uh, in it, right? So, um, if we try to build that and, and run, <clears throat> when we put the kernel this time around, we're going to get a, a hello world message there. Um, and it's building and um, let's, let's run QMU again. And when QMU runs, um, if we scroll up a bit, we'll, we'll find it here. It's prefixed by skull, which is the name of the module, and then the hello world message that um, we wrote. Um, so now we know that our, our module is, is, is running and we know that um, uh, we can print something to the, to, to the kernel log. Uh, one thing that I should mention here just briefly is that um, <clears throat> this is similar to, to, to the um, T version, uh, but, but this, this is actually type safe, right? In, 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 in the C version, uh, since it's print, printf style, you can do percent uh, P or, or, or percent uh, S and, and, and passing a uh, bad pointer or something. Um, and, and that uh, uh, may potentially crash the, the, the kernel or, or create some, um, um, well, introduce some, some problems, right? And, and in Rust, you, you can't really do that. You don't specify the type, right? You could do something like, um, uh, so you, could, you could do something like this, okay? Um, So, so something like this, okay? And this would print a hello 32 world, okay? And we don't specify the type here, 
Uh, but this, this is a macro. What, what happens is that this gets expanded to, 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 to something that is type safe. Um, but let's not do that now. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so, so this is uh, uh, step three. Let's, uh, let's save this here. Um, now the, the, the nice thing we want to do really is is um, in our in our driver when I showed you the diagram before what what we wanted to do was uh, we wanted to to have some skull devices and to be able to implement things uh, to do things when when uh, uh, users uh, opened and wrote and read uh, to it from file so what what we want to do is we want to come here and say we, we want to use kernel file. And we're going to, as I said, there's, there's a theme here. We want to do uh, file operations uh, for its call. Okay. <clears throat> we want to implement that. Now, uh, one thing that I that I that I said uh, I liked about uh, uh, Rust Analyzer and NeoBeam is that uh, you can actually ask for 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 help. So if I'm hovering here on top of uh, file operations and I, I press Shift K. I actually get a, a description of, of what that, that is. It says it's, it corresponds to struct file operations. Um, <clears throat> and if I do control um, right, uh, uh, right square, square, square brackets, it takes me to, to the definition of that thing. All right, and then in the definition, I'm going to copy here this open um, function and I'm going to paste it. This is about what function that we have to implement. The type here is file called golden. Uh, and, and here we're going to do this. Okay. Uh, I was opened. Okay. So, so we we're implementing file operations, and we're saying that uh, when when the open get, gets called, then we want to, to print a message to the log again saying a uh, file was opened. So let's try to compile that. Let's see if I <laughs> if I messed something up. Um, oh yes, I did. Um, we actually need to add uh, an annotation here. That says that's um, we're going to build a B table out of that. We're going to build a file operations table uh, from this. And now it compiles, and um, uh, it also has warnings about the arguments not being used. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Uh, we're going to uh, prefix it with the represents, and if we build again, um, this. Uh, so compile and have no warnings. Now, if you try to run this, and, and I'm not going to run this in, in, in the interest of time, but if, if you run this, <coughs> there's actually no file for us to open, right? And um, I'll, actually, I'll, I'll save this as, as, as step four. Um, but but if, if, if we actually run this, there's, there, there is no way for us to get this open to be, to be, to be called, right? Um, for example, if I look at and that there is there is no um, skull there, and the reason is this: if you recall from 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 what I said about the, the lifetime of a module, what happens is it did get called, and then we have to register with some uh, uh, subsystem, um, and then we get called later on. Uh, now here we actually have an implementation of, of open, but we didn't register with any uh, subsystem. Uh, so let's 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 um, register with some subsystem. Okay, so. Um, the subsystem we're going to register with is this MISC, MISC lab, miscellaneous uh, device. It's basically a software, software implemented device um, on, on the C side. Right, so what, what we're going to do here is we're going to say um, we have a registration, uh, MISC lab, a registration, um, call, um, new paint, um, and we need to give it a name. Um, skull and some data and the data. <clears throat> it is going to be nothing. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna try to compile this to make sure, just make sure that I <coughs> that I have everything. Yes. Uh, and this actually is the first appearance of something that I mentioned before is this question mark, right? So what I'm saying with this question mark here is. This uh, registration that I'm calling new new paint, this actually may fail. And if it does fail, then I just wanted to, to return where I and fail my init. However, if it does succeed, then I want the, the, the success uh, part of the results to be stored in, in, in reg. Okay. 
Now, one way to, if, we, if I didn't, really didn't want to, to, to do this, one thing that I could do is I could explicitly check, right, uh, if fresh uh, is error, and then I could, I got some, some error handling here in return, or to do something like if let uh, error be fresh, I could do something like that uh, and have my <coughs> error handling here. So, like, I could do something like that. Uh, and, and you'd have to do something like that here in, 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 in C, right? You actually have to check the return value. Um, but in, in, in Rust, uh, actually, let me show you uh, some, something uh, interesting in Rust. If we, if we don't leave the question mark here, uh, and, and we, uh, um, we don't check for error, it's, it's actually complaining that we're not, never using branch. So I'll, I'll come back to this. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you another warning that it gives. Uh, but anyway, let's put the question mark and I'll come back to this and I'll show you the other one uh, later on. Uh, so here, so, so we've registered, okay, with, with, with a subsystem. And if I try to make this, um, it's still going to be a warning, but, uh, but it's, it's, it's going to build, okay? Now, if I try to run this, it, it's still not going to give me uh, uh, the file. And, and the reason is, is this. Um, remember that I said that uh, most of these types and especially things like these registrations, they have a, this, this drop implementation that, that undo uh, whatever this needs to be undone, okay, for, for error handling. So the idea here is that um, when, I, when I return okay, right, that's the, the end of the scope for registration, right? So registration is going to unregister, right? So we are both registering and unregistering uh, during our, our init. So what we need to do really is we need to hold on to this registration and only unregister it when, when the module is unloaded. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this <coughs> registration here. Um, I'm going to say that it's uh, a registration. And, um, but so there are a few questions um, that are probably relevant now for the present, uh, for the uh, what's happening now, your presentation. Yep. Um, yep. So I think somebody is requesting uh, you to speak a bit slower. Looks like they're having it, they think it's fast. <laughs> I suffer from the same thing, so I totally get that. I, I speak fast. So that's yes. one request. Um, somebody was asking if these comments, and I'm assuming the code you are doing right now, um, are there commit uploads somewhere? I'm guessing now you are actually doing the live coding. Yes, yes, I, I'm doing it live. But uh, there is, so one thing that I did do was uh, I, I, I prepared this ahead of time. And I've committed a, a similar, very similar version to this. Uh, and there's a link to it in the slide deck towards, towards the end. Um, and then the people can, can, can go there. It's, it's in GitHub. Uh, OK, so there is a link in the slide deck that you can look at, refer to uh, when you are listening to this again. I'm pretty sure you'll be listening to this. I'll be listening to it a couple of times. So I, can, I get this right, meaning while playing with it. Um, yeah. So yes, so there is one. And let me see what other question there is that could be uh, more than, okay. Uh, can we just build a module for load, unload, and not build the whole kernel all the time? Meaning I think we, just the map. We can, yes, we can. And, and <clears throat> in fact, this is the, 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 the last step. Uh, the, the reason I'm not doing it this way is because um, uh, our image is, is, is fixed, right? So what we have to do is this, we have to build the-, the, the It's the, a static module. module, right. We, yeah, we can build the module as a KO, okay? But mm -hmm. then we have to copy this KO into our, our mm -hmm. image, rebuild the image, right? And then, so the idea is basically when you go to QMU, uh, this new code needs to make it to QMU somehow, either through the kernel image or through the busybox image, one of the two. No, and I didn't want to be rebuilding the uh, um, busy box image all the time, right? And and like this rebuilding of, of the kernel, it, well, if, if you look at it, it's just relinking, right? Because the pieces that were uh, uh, compiled ahead of time are, are compiled, and we just be using that. The thing that we have to keep redoing is is, is really the, the just building that one file that we are changing and relinking, okay? Uh, but anyway, and you're building uh, yes. the entire image, yeah. That right. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, yes, the, the, the linker makes the whole thing. That's why it takes uh, a little bit more time. Uh, but yeah, uh, if we have time, uh, I don't think we will, uh, especially if people are asking me to slow down. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but if you look at uh, uh, um, 
the, the, the 16th step was to actually, instead of compiling the thing built in, we would compile this as a module, which would generate a KO file that we had to put into our image and then boot. And then we can do ins mod and RM mod. And uh, in fact, we could see uh, things being, um, things being uh, 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 like devices appearing while we do ins mod and then disappearing when we do an RM mod. Um, but, but yeah, so, so it's possible. Um, and it's something that we're going to do um, later on if we have time. Uh, but anyway, if, even if you don't have time, uh, it's in the slides. So you can, you can look at the yeah. slide that, that, that we've seen. So there is one question. Is it possible to make an outer tree module with Rust? I would think the answer is yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. It, it is possible to, to, to do that. Um, if, you, if you go to the, to, the, to the link that has the, the Rust for Linux uh, uh, project in it, uh, up to Rust for Linux, um, and then there's Linux.git. If you remove the Linux.git, if you, uh, meaning that you go to the to the to to, to one one level above, you you, you have another project in there, uh, side by side to Linux, which is an Auto Tree example, right? That you can you can see the one the one thing about the Auto Tree <clears throat> example is that you can't build, and this is true for you know, mostly for C as well. You can't just build the thing for any kernel, right? You actually have to build a kernel once. With support for, for for Rust, right, and then you can build out of tree uh, for that kernel. Um, so yes, it's possible, uh, but uh, you have to be careful that you have to use the the a kernel that was built with Rust uh, support enabled uh, when you're building this out of tree. So yeah, it's possible. Okay, so we are all set with the questions related to uh, what you're presenting now, and there are some general questions in the Q and A. We can get to them later. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so <clears throat> where was I? So yeah. So so I was, I was trying to 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 stick to to so yeah to to save the the registration that I had here in in in, in my thing. Actually, before I go there, one thing that I'd like to show is this. So I've added a field to, to the struct. Okay. Uh, if I try and, and but here I'm not initializing that field at all, right? I'm I'm just um, uh, say in an empty empty struct, and I'm using it as an empty struct. Uh, if I try to compile that, uh, and this is something that is um, different between C and and, and Rust, is that uh, here um, <clears throat> the, the, the compiler is, is complaining that uh, we're not initializing underscore that, right? Um, so one thing that Rust enforces is is that if we have a struct, that all fields of this struct uh, be initialized. There is a way, maybe an init, for you to say that, oh, certain things may not be initialized. But that means that when you want to use it, there's no way for the compiler to, to know that whether it was initialized or not. So it's, it becomes unsafe. Um, so if you just want to use safe stuff, then <clears throat> you have to initialize uh, everything. So what we're going to do here is, is, is this. I actually need to, to do it in a new line. So we're going to say that is, is initialized to this registration here that, that uh, yeah, so let's let's try to to compile that. And now and now it compiles and there, there are no warnings. Um, and and what it means now is that when we um, initialize this module, it registers with with Oh, one one thing also that I should say is that uh, since I'm using reg here, <clears throat> and and um, uh, it knows that that uh, the type of, of reg is is the same as that which is specified here, which already talks about skull here. I can actually remove this uh, specification of the type because the compiler can, can infer it. Take this and I, and I make it again. Um, but then there is one question probably uh, relevant here. Uh, can you yeah. please explain why new pinned is used? I know how to use misdev in C, but pinned is new to me. I guess it is a Rust memory pin. Yes. So um, there's actually. Um, <clears throat> There's a there's a there's a whole presentation where I spend I don't know, maybe half an hour talking talking about this, but I'll, I'll try to be brief here, um, and I'll, I'll post a link to the to, to this other presentation where you can you can talk about this. But but the idea is that in in Rust, uh, all variables are by default uh, movable, which means that if you declare something, <clears throat> let's say you declare a, 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 a misc that registration on the stack, okay, and then you can you can initialize it. And then you can move it to to some uh, other allocation or to some uh, uh, another stack position. But anyway, you can move it, right? And moving in Rust means copying bit by bit, 
Okay, and all types are, are movable by, by, by default. Um, now, of course, this map does, doesn't, uh, once it's initialized, it doesn't allow us to, to move things because there's a, a list head in it that points to itself, it's self-referential, okay? So if we have something that is self-referential, we have a, a personal memory here that's pointing to itself, right? And then we get the bits of this memory and we move it elsewhere, right? They actually now, they are pointing, uh, still pointing back to, to where it was initialized, okay? Um, so what this um, uh, uh, pin here means is that, um, we're saying that once the, the MISC uh, registration is initialized, it cannot be moved, right? So the pin here just means that it cannot be, be moved, right? And box means that we are allocating uh, memory for it. Um, and, and, and that's that's the way that uh, we pin it. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll share a link to, to, to this thing where we where I talk about this. And I actually talk about new pins. There's a different way for you to do this that doesn't involve uh, um, allocation, memory allocation. Uh, but that involves an unsafe. Uh, and in, what I'm trying to do in that presentation is actually try to, to talk to people in the language or in the libraries to provide a way for us to do it without having to be uh, unsafe. So there seems to be a related question in the chat. Yeah. Should we pin all pointers in kernel and how Rust reacts while compiling if this contract, contract is not met? Oh, so uh, um, <clears throat> that is very, so, if you, if you mark something as pinned, then, then uh, if you don't meet the, the, the requirements, then it doesn't compile, right? The, the compiler actually uh, tracks that. Uh, the compiler is, is able to, to, to do that, um, which means that you can't really, you can never get a, a mutable, a direct mutable reference uh, to something. So you're not able to, to, to move it because there's no way to get hold of the thing for it to, to move. The only way to get hold of this thing that you're allowed to move is through an unsafe uh, uh, operation. And that unsafe operation has as a safety requirement that it, that you may change things, but in the process of changing things, that you don't move anything, um, and 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 you have to you have to avoid uh, uh, honor this uh, requirement. Otherwise, uh, your stuff is, is unsound uh, and it may break at one time. Um, so yeah, so the compiler will enforce it, uh, yeah, but it. it so the, the thing is, the compiler will enforce it, but it will enforce more than it really needs to enforce. Okay, which means that even for legitimate users, you need to use unsafe. So it looks like another follow-up question. Okay, let's say I create my own buffer. Okay. So what? But what about the? So I, I actually, what do you mean? Like you create your own buffer and then you put, a, you want to put a misc tab registration in there? Is that, is that the question? Uh, no, I think so. Uh, Michael, um, you can unmute and and ask the question if you like. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, let, let's say I create a buffer uh, to store some data, then I need to pass this data down to the some you know pipeline of the functions. And what if I just create this as a box pointer or I don't pin the pointer really? Um, okay. Can I get any bad, you know, kind of consequences at runtime, or or it just relies on the fact that the APIs I call sooner sooner or later, they actually require the pin pointer, so I have to uh, convert it to pin before I, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. So 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 the idea is that uh, <clears throat> if if the API that you're going to call requires uh, pinning. Right. Then, then uh, in the API uh, signature, that will be there will be a, a pin thing there, right? Uh, which means that if you try to call it without pinning, then it's going to fail. It's not, not going to compile. Okay. Now, if if the downstream thing you're passing to doesn't require pinning, then it, pin is not going to be part of, of its signature. Then you can just allocate and, and pass it in. Um, and, and and so as an example, if you like, if I go to the definition of registration here uh, on my screen, um, if you look at the the register function. Here it is. You see, like there's a pin in itself. You see, so here I'm not even saying so. It's not me. Like the, the, the API, which I happen to, to happen to have implemented, but the API say I need it needs to be pinned. It doesn't matter if it's if it's uh, a box, if it's uh, a stack variable, or if it's a reference counted thing. It doesn't matter, right? But it needs to be pinned, right? Um, and and um, uh, and, and, and the, the implication of your course is that uh, this API requires it, right? But if the API didn't, then, then you could just say uh, itself and then it, 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 it would take anything, including pin things. Does it, does it make sense, Michael? Yeah, he said, thanks, got it. Uh, one more question. The lifetime of this heap in heap 
is until unpinned or end of the program. I'm guessing they want to know uh, the lifetime of this keep. Oh, so, so the, the lifetime of, of, of the box itself is, is, is whatever the lifetime of it is, right? When it goes out of scope, uh, then it gets, it gets freed. The lifetime of the pin is, is uh, uh, the lifetime of, of the outer thing. So the, the, the requirements for pinning is that you don't move it, right? Uh, before you drop it. Right? And, and drop is when it's about to be de destroyed, right? So it's, it's about to be destroyed, then the drop gets called. Um, and after drop gets called, now you can, now it's not pinned anymore. You can do uh, whatever it is that you want to do with it. And in the case of, of registration, for example, uh, the drop of registration is to unregister, right? Which means that those self-referential pointers are, are unlinked and it doesn't really matter if you move things because those are not initialized anymore, right? So, so it's up to the drop point when you stop using uh, something. And then the, the, the pin goes away and then you can, uh, uh, do whatever you want with the does it, does it make sense? I hope, I hope it makes sense. If it doesn't, I'm happy to try to try it again. Yes, um, it looks like uh, it made sense to the person that asked the question. And there is another one. How can I enable the skull module in make when you can config? Okay, make menu config. Okay, so I'll show you that. Is it part of the config? I guess, you know, that's part it, it of it. Is. Mm -hmm, right. Yes. So, so, so if you if you come to make uh, menu config, it would uh, be the same way you would enable any other uh, kernel module. Yes, any kernel yes, module. Yes, it's no it, different. It's no different. No, it's exactly right. the same. It, it, right. it, it, it's no different from from C. I like, could see right. like skull module here, and then it's, you can like change it here to a star and other star. Okay. Sorry. I think we'll take the questions. The rest of the questions later. Um, Let's continue. Looks like yeah. we have about 15 minutes left. We only have 15 minutes, yes. Uh, let's see. We did four steps, or 16. So, um, okay, let's, let's, let's try to compile this. Um, <clears throat> okay, it looks like it's ready to compile. So, if, if, we, if we run, uh, give me you now. Um, now we have a, a, a bad skull because now the, the registration uh, went through and it stayed uh, alive because um, we, we stored it away in our um, uh, state after, after initialization. Okay, and if you try to do something with it, um, try to do a cat, right? Then that message that we had printed to the log uh, file was open appears because the file gets open, right? Remember, I told you when there's a cat, there's an open, then a read, then a close, right? Uh, the uh, open was called. And, uh, but then it, it failed, right? And if you try to write something to it, again, the file was opened, uh, but uh, the right, right uh, call failed. Um, and the reason for that is because we didn't implement a read or write, we just implemented the, the, the open. Okay, so <clears throat> actually let's save this as, actually let me see what is this, that is step five. Um, next, let's 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 try to to implement the the, the read and write. Um, let's try to do it quickly. Um, let's come back to the, the text. Um, so one thing that I can do here is I can come to all operations definition, and then I can I'll copy the read and write here. And I'll come back to here. And I'll change some types here. The five things. Let's come back to this. <clears throat> Add the, the namespace here. Um, and a comma here. And then we have this uh, IO buffer writer and reader, which are not. Um, uh, used or, or imported yet. Uh, and they are from this IO buffer. So reader and, and IO buffer writer. Okay, so um, <clears throat> again, so we, we had the, the file operations uh, block. Okay, so it, it starts here and it ends uh, down here. And um, initially we only had open, right? So what I did is I, I declared uh, read and write uh, right now they're empty. If I try to compile this, it's not going to compile because I need to return something. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, uh, PR info here. Yeah, let's say file was uh, red. And I'll do something similar here, but I'll say file was written. And what we what we have to return is is in the in the read case is, is how many bytes were um, um, read. So we're going to say uh, zero bytes were read. Were read, uh, meaning that um, there's nothing to read in the file. And um, in the right case, instead of saying because if, on the right case, if we say zero, then then uh, the callers are going to try to, to keep calling right to see if it, if they can uh, progress. So so we're going to lie. And we're going to say that uh, we've written everything that we've asked us to, to, um, to write. Uh, one thing briefly here, um, small difference between this, uh, between Rust and, and C is that um, the last statement in, in Rust, if you don't add a semicolon to it, then its value is, 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 is the return value of that block. Okay, So this is equivalent to doing something like, let me come back here. This is equivalent to doing something like this, um, turn O. Oh, Oh, uh, into that. Okay, and you can remove the semicolon, and you can remove the return, and that's it. Let's try to compile this. Let's see if um, see if this compiles. Yep, it did compile. Um, I tried to run it, um, and let's. So what, what I expect to see is that this uh, we're going to see a uh, file was open, file was read, file in, in the case of reading, and file was written in the case of writing. If, let's see if uh, the thing is there. We do a cat. You see, we get a uh, file was opened and file was read. And if we try to write something to it, okay, file was open and file was written. Um, so this is good. I think this this uh, was two steps. Um, there is uh, one last. Um, Step that is very interesting that I, I want to show you uh, before we stop since, since we don't have uh, much time because this is actually um, um, quite quite a difference between between Rust uh, and and um, and C and, and and it's it's um, it, it's a it, it's a case in which you'll see that uh, Rust actually uh, saves us from from potential um, user to free. Um, so let let me first uh, save this state. Um, Where are the stats? So it's six and seven. Okay, so uh, what, what, what we wanted to do really was uh, when we, um, in each device, uh, if you remember the, the diagram, what we wanted to do there was each device had its own uh, attached data that we could, uh, uh, we could return on, 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 on read. And, uh, uh, and and when the write was called, we could update it, and then on read we returned it. Um, so what what we'd like to do is was to have some to do something like this. We have we wanted to have some device state, right? So we say like there's a device number, um, which is which is a uh, use size, and we have some contents uh, attached to it, which is a vector of, of bytes. So this is uh, some something that that we wanted to have, okay? <laughs> and and um, really, what we wanted is is that when when open gets called, that we get a pointer to this to this uh, device that that we've we've allocated, right? So this device uh, information, an instance of this device information, is attached to the registration. Okay. So what the way we do it in file operations is we have this uh, open data type, right? Which is which at the moment is, is defined as as, as uh, nothing. Um, uh, what we're going to say, it's a box of device, so some, some memory allocated for, uh, for device. And you see there's, there's no pinning here, meaning that I, I, it's not a requirement uh, that it be pinned. Um, now, when, when I do this um, and my open gets called, then the type of open data is, is box device, right? So I can say file for device uh, context number. If I try to compile this, um, it's going to fail because um, when I register, I actually have to specify what it is that I'm uh, 
that, that I want to have attached as data to my <coughs> to my registration. So here I need to need to specify some device, and then device I can create a new one. Um, something like this. And um, number let's um, call, it, call it one and contents I'm gonna say it's a new back. And note that I have a question mark here saying that this may fail. There's an allocation involved. If the allocation fails, I return right away. Uh, there's nothing to, to clean up. Now, here's there, there's also a question mark here, which means that if this fails, I return right away. But I actually have some cleanup to do. I actually will free this uh, allocation that I that I had done here. There is no such thing in C, right? In C, you, what you have to do here is you have to do a manual. Like if if uh, this this failed, I have to to free this memory uh, explicitly here before I return. And I may forget, and then I have a leak. Right? Uh, so that's See if this compiles. Let's see if I miss something. Um, uh, it's, there's a warning saying that you not, never use use contents, which which is fine. Okay. Um, now, so and, and this 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 was uh, one step, and now this is the part where um, uh, you see the difference between uh, like one big difference between C and 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 and, and Rust. Um, the the our open is is being called right. <clears throat> When open is being called, we know that the registration is active, and we know that uh, 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 the, the context is available. Okay, but uh, during the other uh, calls, we actually don't don't have access to this open data. What we have access to is this data here uh, that uh, uh, is is returned during open, right? And we want them to be the same thing. And we can say the data that is attached to to an open file is a box device as well. Okay. And this means that now this is not in uh, an empty tuple anymore. Now this is a device, a reference to a device. And this is a reference to a device as well. It's all good. <clears throat> now when I return, I have to return context here. So let's say I let's say I try to do that. Okay. Let's see if I if I mess anything up here in the syntax, but um, okay, no, so my syntax is fine. Now this is the this this, this is an error that uh, uh, Rust gives us that that uh, C wouldn't. Okay, but here's what's happening. Uh, my open open function is being called, and I'm being I'm being given a, a pointer to a context. Okay, and I'm trying to to return that and store it away for for later use in in read and write, right? But what Rust is telling me is that uh, the return type expects to own uh, context, right? But you gave me just a reference to 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 a context, meaning that we borrowed uh, a context. Uh, so this is not allowed, right? Uh, it's it's complaining about the type. So you can say, oh, if it's because it's reference, let's try to dereference that. We could put a uh, star here, and we try to try to compile again. And then what's <clears throat> what's going to happen over oh, here? We, we're losing the message because uh, the thing is messed up. So I did a reset, and let's uh, run the thing again. Now we get to see it. It's saying that uh, context, the, the box device, is not, is not a copy trait. It doesn't implement copy trait, meaning that you can't just make a copy of it, right? If, if this were, for example, an integer, right? Then we could just copy the integer. This, this would have worked fine, right? But this is an allocation that has a pointer to it. So you can't just uh, make, it, make, make a copy of that pointer and, and be happy with it. Um, so, so this doesn't work. And this actually saves uh, uh, us in Rust because this is actually a, a, a big source of um, a big source of bugs in the kernel in general because uh, what happens is when the the registration so a a registration of a misstep can actually go away meaning that no new uh, open uh, calls can can be made okay uh, however files that were open can remain remain opened right which means that <clears throat> files that are open if, if we were allowed to just keep a copy of, of context here files that that were opened and are uh, read uh, uh, or or written would be accessing uh, Freed uh, data, right? A freed pointer, right? So this is something that Rust protects us from. Doesn't allow us to do, right? Um, and this is actually an existing uh, problem in, in in C code uh, in the kernel. Uh, the the solution here really is for us to instead of using just a a, a box, is to use a ref. So just just a simple location of device is to make it ref counted. But um, and in fact, Rust actually makes things easier to to be ref counted. In C, what you have to do is you have to embed uh, some state within the, the struct that makes it ref counted, and then uh, it's always ref counted. 
That's not the case in, in, in Rust. In Rust, what we can do is we have this type called, um, it's arc in regular um, uh, Rust, but in the kernel it's called ref. Okay. Um, we managed it with ref counts. Uh, you're saying it uh, uh, can do that automatically. I mean, the Rust yes. kind of helps you. Yes, because we yeah. handle all of those things, freeing and such with the DevM resources um, yeah. that we don't have to explicitly free them in some cases. And DevM comes with its downsides too, that yes. the, the when it gets released it can be problematic for this particular case that you're talking about. Yes, exactly, Shwab. That's exactly it. We, we use that then in, on the C side, right? And we say, okay, we've solved the problem. But during unregistration, that then pre stays, right? Right. But then we, it, can, we can have file pointers like skew right. around, try to. So we, even our attempt uh, uh, to, to fix this in, in C didn't really cover this. Uh, it's a multiple, problem. yes. The lifetime, resource lifetime is a complex model uh, to be able to manage. It goes to yes. resource lifetimes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yes, we're on the same page there. So let me just finish this. It's 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 um, quick, and then we can open for for for, for questions in whatever few minutes we have. Uh, if if there are questions. Um, we just have two minutes, uh, actually a minute. Uh, right, let's wrap up your presentation and um, let's do that. And the questions, I think mostly are generic question asking status about the Rust code in the kernel. They can come and contact you on your chat. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to try to answer questions there. Uh, and and, and um, yeah, I don't think we went uh, as far as, as, as I wanted in the, in the, in the, in the code lab, but um, I just think I got to show uh, an example of, of, of a place where, where Rust saves us. Uh, there, there were a few others uh, later on, uh, but anyway, people can see it in the, in the in the presentation, um, yeah, this this that's, uh, this was it. Uh, um, but the, the, the latest latest changes that I made uh, made the device uh, ref counted. Uh, I just replaced a bunch of boxes with refs, and, and that was it. Um, yeah, thanks, um, thanks everyone. Uh, if you have questions, yeah, send send me a message. I'll I'll, I'll I'll try to 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 answer them. Um, Were you able to cover you... whatever you wanted to cover, uh, Redson, or you're kind of you know? Do, do you? Uh, should, should we continue or should, um, should we continue a few more minutes or should we stop here? Uh, sure. So yes, um, Candice, well, how are we doing on time? It depends on how long, um, Redson. Is it, are you looking at five minutes? Uh, no, yeah. So, so let's go back to the, to the presentation there. I'll just say a few things there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Let me switch back there. Um, no. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so that's um, stepping over all, all of this. Um, in conclusion, uh, what, what we should have done is, is create the, the, the thing that I uh, uh, described in the beginning and um, the code is available here. This is, this is the link that I, that I, I, I told you all that um, uh, contains these these steps uh, implemented. So if you wanna uh, see all of them completed, this is uh, this is where the code is. Um, another thing that that uh, I wanted to say was that um, we have other sessions coming up. We have a session on uh, setting up an environment to do this because mm -hmm. this session uh, I provided you folks with uh, uh, a VM with everything set up. Uh, so we're gonna have another one where we, we set it up from 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 scratch and and. Uh, there I can show you if, if, if we have time how we can contribute to, to, to the project and um, perhaps how to debug things with GDB and, and, and things like those. And then we have another session of uh, about writing uh, async code uh, in the kernel, which is basically uh, a way for you to write uh, linear code. It's, uh, you write the code linearly, right? But it's it, it gets um, to run on 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 work queues basically, right? <clears throat> and you never burn a thread when you pause. Um, and um, that's it. That's 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 all I had for today. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Redson. Yes, uh, uh, Redson is presenting two more sessions, like he talked about. We are, I think, planning to schedule them one in uh, um, September, October timeframe. I think the two of them uh, before the end of this year. Please look out for them on the site, and then um, 
uh, join for those sessions as well. Thank you, Rickson. This is great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Uh, happy to to try to answer questions. Just send it to me. Um, Yes. Okay. Yeah. Please, please reach out to Betson with questions. I know there are lots of questions we couldn't get to, and and part of the reason is they it didn't feel like they were relevant to what we're doing. They're more generic to a status of Rust and such. So I made a call to not interrupt Betson. That's that's on me. Um, thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Watson and Shua, for your time today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. As a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation YouTube page later today. We hope you are able to join us for future mentorship sessions. Have a wonderful day.